This film is about how newer homes can deal better with the risk of flooding in the future, as well as exploring potential causes of damp. By newer homes, we are referring to construction using cavity walls. For advice on dealing with flooding in traditional buildings, see our second film, Flood Resilience in Traditional Buildings. The right drying methods can also reduce the impact of a flood. Every building is unique, so this film can only provide general guidance. More ways to get specific advice are available on the Cumbria Action for Sustainability website. As discussed in other films, climate change is resulting in increased regularity of flooding, so it makes sense to try and reduce some of the stress and costs of flooding. In the first instance, it will hopefully allow you to return to your home after only a short time and may even mean that you don't need to leave at all. To reduce the increased instances of extreme weather, we also need to use less energy. Whilst looking at ways to make your home more flood and extreme weather resilient, it's a great idea to improve the energy efficiency and to reduce carbon emissions and heating costs. To minimise the impact on your home, you are likely to be looking at a mix of flood resistance and flood resilience measures. Flood resistance measures aim to stop the water getting into the building in the first place and perhaps have a greater role in protecting newer buildings where materials used in the construction look to stop moisture from getting in, rather like a raincoat. Flood resilience measures aim to minimise the impact of floodwaters if they enter the building, reducing the need to strip out damaged fittings and fixtures. These are covered in our film, Damp and Rain in Traditional Buildings. In this film, we will be discussing flood resistance measures. As a starting point, to stop water getting into your home, you need to understand where the water is potentially coming from, the flood risk. Again, the potential sources are explored in our second film. Once you have an idea of where the flood water is coming from, you can then decide on your best options for flood resistance. You also need to bear in mind that flood water can come from a number of different directions over the period of a flood, and you may need to introduce a range of measures to address this and plan how you might use them. Flood gates and flood doors prevent water from coming in the external doors. Flood doors are perhaps more suitable for newer homes as they replace existing doors. Flood gates allow you to keep your existing door with support frames fitted to either side into which you slot sections of the gate as you need them. Similarly, they are easy to remove as the flood waters recede, but you will need to be vigilant to ensure that you put them in place prior to the flood. If you have a suspended timber floor with venting air bricks, then these air bricks will also need to be covered during the flood to prevent water getting in. However, if the flood water is rising from the ground, then gates may not help. Rather, you may need help pumping the water out. A sump pump set into the ground with a protected electrical supply and ideally battery backup can pump the water out before it gets to the floor level. It can also give you additional time to move more precious items away from the flood waters. Flood waters can also come from the drains, both surface water and foul water, resulting in contaminated water entering your house. Non-return valves can therefore be fitted to your personal drainage pipes to prevent flood water from backing up into the building. Being flooded can be very stressful, and whilst you might lose power and heat during the event, ideally you want to have the light and heat back on again as soon as possible afterwards to help with the drying process and for your own comfort. This can be achieved by locating services above the anticipated flood level. Think about locating your heating boiler at first floor, locating any sockets at ground floor above the flood line, and bring all electrical service runs down the walls from above rather than from the ground floor up. Cavity walls in newer buildings are designed to prevent moisture from passing through to the inside. Whilst modern cavity walls also include insulation, Early cavity walls didn't, and it's common to see these cavities filled with insulation retrospectively. There are, however, risks with this, as it can lead to water tracking across the cavity if it's not installed properly, or there may be issues with the cavity in the first place. This can be further compounded if a building is regularly exposed to driving rain or is at risk from flooding. 
the thinner outer leaf of the building can get so wet that the cavity insulation starts to absorb moisture and becomes ineffective, as well as causing damp problems inside. So if your building is at risk of flooding and has an unfilled cavity, you should first have the cavity inspected before installing insulation. Check on its condition. Is it too narrow? Is rain penetrating through the outer skin because of the building's exposure? After a flood, you may also need to pump the water out of the cavity. If you suspect existing insulation is already causing damp problems following driving rain or flooding, check the rainwater goods are working correctly and get professional help to check the condition of the insulation. If the installation is still under guarantee, it may be possible to have it removed or replaced, or the cavity left empty. As explained in the third film about damp in traditional buildings, routine building maintenance is the first line of defence in preventing the build-up of damp. Making sure your rainwater goods are working well, and other simple regular checks set out in our earlier film, Flood Resilience in Traditional Buildings, are just as relevant to newer buildings. In summary, fitting newer buildings to cope better with flooding means understanding where the water is coming from, with a greater emphasis on the use of flood resistance measures to stop the water getting into the building. This reflects the more waterproof characteristics of newer buildings of cavity wall construction.